there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Flora and today I'm going to be showing you all how I use Notion to stay organized as a university student. You might have heard about Notion already by now, but it's basically this all-in-one productivity tool that I use to keep track of everything from my schoolwork and job applications all the way to my daily journaling and habit tracking. I first started using Notion when I began university last year and honestly it has helped me so much with just staying organized and on top of things and now it's a tool that I use every single day help y'all get started. I am also going to be sharing my template down below in the description and I want to say that I was really inspired by some other YouTubers like Brianna Kwan and Revisign so I'm going to be linking their original content down below as well. So without any further ado, let's get right into the video. The first thing that I see when I open up my Notion is my dashboard and this is basically where I have links to each of my other sub pages divided up by category. And the way that things work in Notion is that each of these items is a block. So if I wanted, say, a new page, I would simply use the backslash to open up the commands and then type in page, press enter, and now I have a new untitled page. Easy as that. So I'm going to delete that for now, but the first thing that I'm going to show you all is my weekly to-do list. This is basically a template that I duplicate every Sunday and I use to plan out my week ahead of time. The way that I'm able to get these to-do blocks is to just use the backslash to open up all the commands to do. And now I can type in whatever I have to do for that week. When the week is over, I simply close the toggle. I select it by clicking on it and then I use command C and a command V to copy and paste. Simply change all the dates to the correct ones and then update my to-do. Once I'm done with this week, I'm going to pop it into my weekly archive and then I just drag it into my table. The first page I'm going to show you all now is my university page because I'm assuming that a lot of you are students. And basically at the top, I have a little motivational quote. I also have a bunch of hyperlinks over here. And the way that you would create a hyperlink is just to type in whatever the text that you want it to be, find a link. So I'm going to get the link from my Google Drive, select this text, press the link button, and then paste the link. And now I have a hyperlink. The way that I like to organize my university page is that for each course, I have its own sub page. So for example, I'm going to show you all the one for my BME 122 class, which is data structures and algorithms. So the way that this works is that I have a course heading, a short description, and a bookmark. What I have here is some quick information at a glance, so things like my instructor and their contact info, which is right below the toggle, but I'm not going to open it for privacy reasons, as well as my TA's contact, um, when office hours are, the credits for the course, as well as what the grade scheme is, and a short excerpts from the course syllabus. These are all toggles, which again is a type of block in Notion. So notice right here, I actually have a table for every single deliverable for this course for the entire semester. And basically, in Notion, you can have properties in your table such as the name, dates, so here I put in the to-do date, tags, so here I put in the type of task. This is actually a filtered version of my original database. I filtered it such that it only shows me things that are relevant to this course, BME 122. But when I click into my original database, this is actually every single deliverable for all my courses for the entire semester. And this is something that I like to fill out at the very beginning of the school term. Um, when I have my syllabi, they typically have all the deliverables and the appropriate dates. So I take like 30 minutes, fill this out, and once I have all these properties, it's really useful later on because I can actually use this table to create for myself a to-do list. And I'm going to show you how I do that now. So I'm going to go back to my university page and scroll a little bit further down. And now I see a Kanban board, which is basically a tool that you can use to drag things around to sort them. And it also has different properties like a to-do. And this is really cool because I can change the views to have it back in the table, or I can have it in the board view, which is what I use to create my to-do list. A way that I would use this is at the start of every single week, I would change the filter. So right now it's set to week five. I'm going to set it to week four so I could see what I had the week before. And now I don't really need to search for what needs to be done that week because since I filled out the giant table at the beginning of the year, it's all set out for me. So all I need to do is change the filter every week. If I scroll a little bit further down, I have a calendar view of the exact same database that I showed you earlier. Again, if I want to see in a table, I click table view, but 
The calendar is really nice to visualize when things are due. So the next page that I'm going to be showing you is the one that I use for my job application. I am a student at the University of Waterloo and I'm also in the co-op program, which means that I'm looking for a job every four months. <laughs> so this page was definitely really helpful for me when I was going through my first job search cycle. I have things like links to my resume. So I have a couple different versions of my resume as well as an archive and some resume critiques. So the way that I would embed a new file is to use the add new button or you can use backslash and type in file and then simply embed it from my desktop or my computer or I can also embed a Google Drive link. Over here I have links to my portfolio as well as my LinkedIn. Feel free to add me there. And I also have a cover letter template as well. If I scroll a little bit further down, I'm able to see things like areas of interest and interview questions. Each of these are just um, some common interview questions that I can ask the employer, as well as questions that the employer may ask me. You could think of what are common questions, type out some tentative answers in bullet form, just so you aren't caught completely off guard during the interview. Over here, I have some key dates for the application cycle. And if I scroll a little bit further down, I can see again yet another table. But now it's all of my applications that I sent in last semester. Over here, I have a few of my jobs and organizations that I'm working with this term. And this one I'm going to show you now is the page I use to organize everything for my product design co-op. I have a daily to-do list I like to fill out the night before just so I'm aware of what's happening once I'm done with it select all the items and then drag and drop it into my yesterday so you can have a good idea of what I did the day before as well as a place where I can put things that are coming up. I also have a template for the daily stand-up and stand-ups are basically just updates that you give to your team to let them know what's going on in a nutshell. On the side over here, I also have sub pages for each of my projects I'm working on at the moment, but I'm not going to go into those right now, as well as a daily log, which isn't so daily because I haven't been super consistent, but basically I would just put in a new entry whenever I wanted to jot something down to remember for that day. It's kind of like a mini journal. If I scroll a little bit further down, I have a Kanban board where I can put things that are new on my plate. So scrolling down from here, I have another table that I use to organize resources for work. And this is super helpful when you're getting onboarded. The next page I'm going to show you now is one that's really useful for keeping track of your habits. I read Atomic Habits a while back by James Clear and it made me really motivated. Basically, it's a table that also functions as a checklist. So each day that I do something, I would just check it off. And then by the end of the week, I'm able to see which goals or which habits I was able to keep up with and which I didn't. And I can also reflect upon it for the next week. The next page I'm going to show you is my journal. I used to journal on paper, but you know how when you write for a long time, you tend to get like a dent in your finger and it's not the most comfortable. So I transferred everything over to Notion and now I'm able to type it out, which saves me some hand pain, but I'm kind of being dramatic. This is basically what I use to put in my daily-ish journal entries. Whenever I have a new journal entry, so today is July the 11th, I would just put in the appropriate date an emoji that represents my day. So since I'm filming again today, maybe I'll put in a camera and I can also put in tags for what I kind of associate my day with. So since I'm filming today, I have a filming tag, YouTube tag, and I also have plans to go shopping later on. So I'm going to put in a shopping tag. Over here, I have the type of journal entry, so whether it's a dream entry, because sometimes I like to write those down. And if I don't really have an idea of what I want to write for the day, I also have a daily entry template that if I click, basically gives me prompts that I can fill in. The next thing that I'm going to show you all is my vision page. I like to fill out my daily focus, something that I'm thankful for for the day. And also here I have my life documents. If I open them, I have a page for my goals. What makes this table a little bit unique is that we actually have a progress bar on the side, which can help me visualize how far I am to completing a goal. For example, the way that it works is that this number over here is my denominator, and this number over here is my numerator. This progress bar over here is basically generated that by a formula, but I'm going to be including this in my template, so you definitely don't have to do this yourself if you don't want to. Over here, I have some additional documents. The person that I want to be, it helps me envision what they're like, how they treat other people, what are their goals and their mindsets. So this is a really great document to just envision that for yourself and manifest it. 
So I'm kind of blocking it out because it is a little bit more personal, but I'm going to be sharing this template so you can fill it out to whatever the person you want to be is like. The next section that I'm going to show you is my bookshelf. And this is something that I really love just to help me see all the books I read or listened to as audiobooks at a glance. So if I want to create a new book, I would simply use the new button. One that's on my reading list right now is Outliers. The status would be want to read. Author is Malcolm Gladwell, type, book, summary, not sure yet, and it would be non-fiction. Because I like to have images so I can see all my books quickly, I would just go into Google, copy the image address, and then here, backslash image, and then embed the link. So now I have an image of the book. This is also how I was able to embed all of my other GIFs that I found off of Google. The next page I'm going to show you now is what I use to keep track of my finances and this is really important as a young adult, especially as someone who's going to be moving out soon. Over here, I have some quick links to my bank and my PayPal just so I can access it and these again are bookmarks. If I scroll a little bit further down, I have a table for both my income and my expenses. Like the university deliverables table that I showed you earlier, these are both filtered version of my giant database here. So the way that I'm able to filter this giant table into something that's a little bit more relevant and a little bit more manageable is by using these filter categories over here. For example, this is my July income. So the time frame contains July, the status in income, and the status does not include projected, which means that it's already happened. Projected is something that I'm anticipating. The money log is the big database I showed you earlier. Budget is basically the money log, but split in by different months and semesters. So I'm able to anticipate expenses and income ahead of time. And archive is for files that I'm not really using at the moment, but I still want to keep. The last page that I'm going to be showing you all today is my focus zone. This is basically the page that I go to whenever I want some heads down focus time. I have a Pomodoro timer, which is a Notion widget. In case you haven't heard of Pomodoro timers, they're basically a tool that can help you manage your time by chunking it into 25 minute work sessions and five minute breaks. And then once you do say three of these 25 minute work sessions, you get a longer break of 15 minutes. What I'm going to show you now is actually how to embed one of these widgets into your own Notion. So the way that you would embed a widget in your own Notion is by going to a website such as Aption.co that has widgets, choosing the one that you want. So maybe I want a weather widget and I would simply copy it to my clipboard, go back to my Notion. And once I've copied that link, what I would do is add a new block below, paste the link, and then create an embed when it prompts me. So by doing this, I now have a weather widget that I can resize to my liking and place wherever I want in my Notion. And I don't actually need that right now, so I'm gonna delete it. Now that I've showed you how to embed it, you know how to get the Spotify embed as well. And as you can see here, I have the lo-fi girl study music just because it's my vibe when I have that heads down work time. And I also have a little to-do list so I can be a little bit more aware of what I want to do during that session. And with that, we conclude our Notion tour for today. Again, I have all my templates and my inspiration linked down below in the description. If you have any video ideas or comments or suggestions, feel free to drop them down below in a comment. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.